Hi, and welcome to Laura's View and Tara too. I'm really glad you're here. Today's date is Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. And uh, as you notice, I've got a co-host in the background. Chloe is fast asleep and uh, enjoying <laughs> some nap time. Um, if she wakes up and joins us, I'll let you guys know, but uh, hopefully we can get through the video with her just enjoying her nap and us getting to our topic. And tonight's topic is the uh, balloting situation in the state of Arizona. This was a uh, subscriber asked me to look at it because there's a lot of activity going on in the state of Arizona right now. Hotly contested balloting situations, definitely. And there's uh, lawsuits that are being filed <clears throat> left and right. <laughs> they are trying to uh, have voters who were disenfranchised during the balloting process earlier this month come forward and provide um, testimony and documentation about that. Now, there's a difference between being inconvenienced and being disenfranchised. If there were tabulation issues that were resolved and um, a balloting was occurred when you were there, you were inconvenienced. Long lines, you're inconvenienced, but long lines to the point that because you're, for example, frail, elderly, or only had a babysitter for two hours and you couldn't cast your vote, then you're disenfranchised. Um, I found a place that really has a good uh, short, I'll tell you which three and a half minutes to listen to to get kind of a synopsis of what's going on in Arizona. And uh, um, we'll talk about this a little further and see what the cards have to say about this uh, hotly contested <laughs> counting situation going on in Arizona where they are still counting. Okay, hang on and I'll click us over to what we want here. I went to politicrossing.com and I'll put a link in my description. An interview here that was excellent, that was a good synopsis of what's going on in Arizona. Maricopa is doing a, a recount Two other red counties in the state, as I was reading, have refused to certify the election. Um, there is a groundswell effort to um, ask for new elections going on. And uh, interestingly enough, I'll, let me show you this and then I'll get back to a, a larger screen. Okay, so if you go to this link that I'll put in my description and you go to this interview, it lasts six minutes, 25 seconds, not too long, but I can tell you right now, if you start at minute, at minute one, minute 30 seconds and go to five minutes, you've gotten the uh, a good synopsis there. So it won't even require that much of your time and attention. Also, I thought I would include something too. The uh, Albert Einstein Institution, which uh, has three letter agency ties, has a, uh, a document out about 198 ways to have nonviolent actions taken when there's balloting concerns. Unfortunately, our three letter agency have utilized these um, in influencing um, balloting things in balloting results in other countries. But what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. These are nonviolent. It's a list that's worth perusing. It may be something that uh, people want to just have, be mindful about. Again, our three-letter agencies have used it in countries where they shouldn't have been using it. <laughs> so <laughs> they're tried and true, unfortunately. Okay. Now, what I'm not going to provide a link for, but you can look if you want. I went to a mainstream news source to see how they were reporting the election and balloting issues. And they were describing um, upset voters as petulant. They tried to say that the, uh, the voting reaction um, is anemic. They had a very selected uh, uh, quick shot of just a few po protesters um, that were protesting the uh, um, results and the inefficiency and the issues on, on their balloting day. Now, to me, listening with ears and being somewhat awake, to me, they sound very fearful. 
trying to say that, you know, they were just having a tantrum and everything was fine. There's a few little minor issues um, that happens everywhere. Nothing to be concerned about. Everybody should just go home and wait two more years and try it again. They sounded very afraid. And I know that there are some calls to action for this weekend. And um, let's ask the cards um, about this situation for specifically for this most recent balloting experience um, for the state of Arizona. Now we have to be really careful how we phrase questions. The universe uh, tends to be a little bit literal and it's only it's not going to infer um, what our meaning is. So we have to make sure that we phrase this right. So looking ahead, let's ask the universe, looking ahead, the concerned <coughs> ballotees <laughs> in Arizona, what information and insights do they need to be aware of or would help them to ensure a correct accounting of their balloting and the results that the legal majority of balloters should have for their outcome. So just insights and information. I'm having to try to phrase this really carefully so that uh, I don't get in trouble, but I also wanna be very clear with the universe. So the citizens of Arizona, those citizens and legal residents who cast a ballot what insights and information do they need to have? What can they anticipate um, in the next few weeks as far as getting to a resolution and an outcome that truly reflects the wishes of the majority of legal participants in that process? Let's see what the universe has to say. Okay, insights and information for those uh, concerned citizens and residents in Arizona. Our first card is the judgment card. Then we have the magician. Ace of Cups, Empress, Eight of Swords, Queen of Swords, and Five of Swords, lots of swords. Well, it's, it's funny with all the um, shenanigans that has gone on in Arizona that some of these cards are actually rather reassuring. Makes me wonder if this is once again a case of things are playing out one way in public and another way in private. You see the judgment card, when we ask for insights and information, the judgment card keeps showing up as people are being, um, having to face choices, uh, some consequences for their choices and actions. And so the situation about this is saying that there's been some dealing with this situation already behind the scenes, even though on the uh, outward, it doesn't seem to be the case. The magician is clarifying that a little bit, um, just get, letting us know that with some balance, things have been manifested. Um, some truth has been had. Now I get that because in the recent past, we have the Ace of Cups which is that there's a potential for a lot of fulfillment um, going on here. So definitely the, the systems that are in place to oversee balloting were well used, absolutely well used. As a result of that, there's already been some quiet consequences for their actions. Getting reassured here in the uh, present, we have the Empress showing up. And look, we have one, two, three major arcanas and an ace showing up here. It's an important question. So people of Arizona, whether something has been done behind the scenes quietly, as far as tabulating and uh, 
having some accountability. I know there's been a lot of talk about um, military um, actions seem to be happening around the voting area the day of and the days after. Um, stay the course though. If you're concerned about that there hasn't been a public change, even if it's happened privately, keep doing what you're doing. It's effective, it's working. It, uh, it provided for the need people knew to have their eyes on the, on the situation. And we know that uh, because Miss Lake as governor would have uh, closed the border, she may have done like our Texas governor did and declared war um, on the, uh, the open border. Um, there were shenanigans, definitely, trying to keep that great uh, opening open and, uh, you know, keep some power going on. Now, we've got the near future here. We've got the Eight of Swords. Now, this person could willingly get out of their dilemma, okay? So there's some waiting here, but it's, it's willing on, on the part of the person doing the waiting. And it talks about having some patience, that you have to wait for some right timing. A little reassurance here to let us know about that right timing. The Queen of Swords is involved. Now remember, swords are all about the written and spoken word, okay? So the Queen of Swords, though, she is very objective and clear thinking and patient. Again, we're getting another a nod to patience here. And I know... People are going, I've been patient through so many election cycles. Why am I being told to be patient? Well, you're being told to be patient, but still continue taking those positive, peaceful actions to make your wishes known and to make manifest the um, election and uh, candidate results that uh, are truly reflective of the will of the majority of the legal voters. And you're getting told here with the five of swords, okay, so you've been told some patience, some patience, <laughs> a little bit of blind trust here into the system, but you're also being told that, um, see, there's been a strategic defeat has happened, okay? And they laid down their weapons, they, they went their merry way, and he's watching to make sure they do keep their word and leave <laughs> as they've said. So again, there's been some judgment, there's been some changes behind the scene. Kind of interesting. Let's get a few more cards, see if we can get some more insights here. Knight of Swords showing up. Again, another big white hat card. Okay. Your balloting situation in Arizona was important. It highlighted all the systemic issues that we have and that need to be addressed. And eyes are on Arizona, not just uh, on the ground, but in the skies. The chariot, the younger energy of the emperor, Again, a white hat card. Okay, so we got a lot of white hat uh, action showing up here. And he, he, when there's a move, either for events or physical moves that are in place, he often shows up as kind of a nod to forward motion is good at this time. We have the five of pentacles showing up here. And again, see, we got a strategic retreat here. We've got some people that are willingly going through some hardship. And I know the, uh, the citizens of Arizona and the people that represent them and are trying to bring lawsuits and get some integrity <clears throat> into the system, um, they're willingly saying the system doesn't work for me. And we're going to, if it takes a while, if we've got to stand out here, if we have to wave flags, we're gonna get something done and changed. And the emperor, the ultimate white hat card here. I think eventually we're going to see corrections in a lot of election situations. Um, Emperor is the ultimate white hat card. So we got one, two, three, <laughs> three strong white hat cards here, Alliance. So and I, I think of those as light filled type of actions. So it looks like what the universe is saying is yes, well, on the one hand, you have to have some patience. Proceed peacefully to continue to make your voices heard. And if, if it gets to the point and you get the opportunity even to go to a brand new election cycle 
and with uh, hand tabulation, that'd be fabulous. And uh, it doesn't seem to be precluded here as an option. It may not happen, but make sure um, if you're in Arizona and you're concerned, if you were not just inconvenienced in trying to cast your ballot, but if you were disenfranchised, they need to know. And then if you have the ways and means to peacefully let your wishes be known, please do so. And I think they should throw out all the results and have a, uh, a new election, but that's just my opinion. That's the Laura's view part of this. The cards though did talk about some patients, let you know there's some oversight. It looks like there may have even been some things happen in the background where they've already been um, some consequences for actions going on. So we know we're having to wait till the very last minute to get those uh, credits rolling and see <laughs> what, what those are. But in the meantime, uh, to voters everywhere who are, whether you're in Brazil or Myanmar or Arizona or Alaska, I think we're still counting up here too. Um, stay the course, stay the course, okay? And be sure as you cast your ballots, when you participate, that you're very clear with the universe what you're casting your ballot for, okay? that you're casting it for representation, not for huge systems of control, but fair and uh, equitable representation. And that's what you give your consent for with your ballot and not more. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for being with me as we explore this topic. And uh, I do thank you for your time. I don't take it for granted. I know I say that almost every video, but I really don't. So thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to watch and mull and follow links and you know think about uh, changes we want to have start happening openly that have maybe been happening quietly. And a big thank you to new subscribers. A big huge thank you to people that have multiple times resubscribed. And uh, for those of you that have uh, been generous uh, through buy me a coffee. Thank you. I appreciate that too. Please, as always, don't do that if you can't afford to do it. If it so, don't please. I don't want anybody to feel compelled to. I am just as happy with uh, loving thoughts and uh, moral support um, and good energy headed my way as I am with those uh, gracious gifts that you give. So I don't dismiss those either. Thank you from my co-host <laughs> and I. Till next time, uh, if you're in the United States and you celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope tomorrow is a fun and uh, feast-filled day for you. And uh, if not, I'm very mindful that it's, it's only one country celebration for the rest of the world. Have a wonderful Thursday. Good night.